The views or opinions expressed on Ann Arbor Inclusive do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the City of Ann Arbor and the Commission on Disability Issues. For more information about the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues, please visit a2gov.org slash disability resources. Hello everyone and welcome to Ann Arbor Inclusive. I'm Zach Damon. We have a wonderful show for you today as the founder, Bobby Schwartz, and President Davis Vorba of the Special Youth Outreach join us in studio. Well, gentlemen, I'd like to start right away and just get things rolling. So for those that don't know, what is the Special Youth Outreach and when was the organization founded? Sure. First and foremost, thanks for having us. It's a privilege to be here. Um, so this is SYO's fifth season. Uh, we are a student group on campus, on the University of Michigan campus. And um, we provide athletic opportunities for the youth and young adults of Ann Arbor that have special needs. So we have a soccer team, a flag football team, and a basketball team. Wow, so, you, so there's a wide variety of activities. Then. Yeah, we started as a soccer team. Okay. Um, but in the last year, we added on the flag football team and a basketball team as it's grown. And you know, there's so many people that are looking to get involved and have different interests. So we're expanding and adding on new opportunities. That, that's great. And, and I'm interested to know for both of you, but I'll start with you, Bobby. Yeah. I mean, first of all, you're the founder of this organization. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you were a student at the University of Michigan you know, when you started this. So do you remember the day and sort of that aha moment then you, then when you said, you know, special youth outreach, this needs to be something. This needs to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I do remember. I was, uh, it was a long time ago now. I feel pretty old. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, when I came to the University of Michigan, so I kind of go through my journey and how I became connected to the special needs community and what really inspired me to do, you know, what we do. And, uh, you know, growing up, I grew up in Morristown, New Jersey, and my best friend's sister actually has autism. And I think, Zach, we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. And Kara is just an incredible person, and I just, she's just great. I've learned so much about her over the, or so much from her over the years. Really how to persevere, work hard, and just be happy as a person, which yeah. is really important. And she really taught that to me. And, you know, working in high school in programs dealing with um, people with disabilities, I just, I continue to learn a lot every day about, you know, how to really live life. Sure. And when I got to the University of Michigan, this is something that I really wanted to continue. It, it was really my favorite thing to do. I, I kind of found my calling and something I was very passionate about. And, you know, a little freshman on campus, September, <laughs> you know, you have Festival, I think it's today, where every, all the freshmen are kind of walking around, trying to figure out, you know, what clubs they want to be a part of, you know, getting a bunch of flyers from different organizations. Sure. And, you know, going around, I, I didn't really see anything um, that really connected with the special needs community. Mm. Um, there's a couple of really cool programs. You know, we have Best Buddies, um, which is an awesome organization, but nothing via sport right. that connected with the community, the special needs community. And to me, I thought that that was something that needed to happen, right? Something that really connected the University of Michigan, all its great resources, all its great student, you know, the large student population, sure. to the special needs community through sport. Mm -hmm. And that was something that, as soon as I you know, realized that there were there was an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you know, I went about it. Um, you know, I started recruiting athletes at local high schools and we started having we started very small. Yeah. You know, we had um, smaller practices, we, you know, played soccer and all that. And um, you know, throughout the years we've had amazing individuals like Davis come and there really are some amazing individuals at the University of Michigan that have really springboarded this and um, obviously our athletes are the most important, you know, very inspiring people. Sure. But uh, when I got to the University of Michigan, I just I saw an opportunity mm -hmm. and something that was definitely needed. And um, it's really cool to kind of see how um, you know the people that are leading it now have have really um, you know increased it a lot and improved it. And it's really cool. And um, something um, you know I just wanted to mention we s specifically take part in unified sports. Yeah. And um, what's really cool about that is it's it's really a team effort. Mm. And um, you know like Davis mentioned, we started with soccer. And then we moved on and also participated in football and basketball. Mm -hmm. But what I especially, specifically, especially like about soccer is it's such a team sport, right? And the way it's formatted, we'll have six special needs athletes on the field mm -hmm. and five uh, volunteers. Sure. And it's just really cool to see it all kind of come together. There's a lot that has to go right in soccer, right? There's a lot of pieces. You know, you have your defenders, your midfielders, and your attackers. Yeah. And it's really, a, truly a team sport. And it's really cool to kind of start practices at the beginning of the year and kind of progress. Sure. You know, everybody gets better. You know, the athletes get better, volunteers get better. We get more familiar with ourselves. Right. And soccer is really a beautiful game. And it's great that we get to share this with our athletes and really build really strong relationships. It's, it's, it's cool. I think soccer is a very symbolic sport. 
I mean, I would totally agree with you. Yeah. Man. I mean, soccer is, is worldwide, and then it's also yeah. gaining incredibly uh, huge uh, notoriety here in the U.S., and it mm -hmm. continues to build. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it's wonderful. I mean, both of you, through the organization, are using athletics uh, as a bridge uh, to the um, you know, disabled community, which I think is amazing. Yeah. And, I mean, and you talked a lot about creating camaraderie, creating the relationship between athlete and volunteer. Now, would you two say that that's one of the things that really separates you from other organizations that may be similar, like, say, the Special Olympics or something? Sure. Like that. Well, I think, um, first of all, Special Olympics is great, and we work closely with them, and they're kind of a, a key contributor to what we do, and we work closely with everything that they do as well. So, um, it, I mean, we both play unified sports, but I think sure. really the whole message for SYO and what, you know, our key, key thing is that it's not just about training or playing a sport or winning a game. Right. It's way more about playing this unified thing where we're all teammates. Mm. So that's kind of our, our, our big message is that everybody who's on the field is, is a friend and then first and foremost playing a sport together as right. just what we do for fun. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, and I'd say uh, camaraderie is everything for us. That, that's really what defines our organization more than anything. And it's just really cool to see the relationships that we've been able to build with our athletes. I mean, just incredible relationships. And I think the coolest thing about it is, like, technically we're mentors, but really sure. uh, our athletes, I think, teach us way more about anything than we teach them. Yeah. You know, we teach them about sport, you know, some of the rules. You know, we try to push them as hard as, as we can to, you know, get better at the sport. Yeah. But uh, it's just really cool, the lessons that I've learned, and I've really been able to translate that into the real world and just be a happier person. And what? That's really the roots of the organization, right? Sure. When Bob started this in his hall in Bursley his freshman year, it was really like his, his hallmates that started. So it, it was, it's like this always been this close-knit group of friends and volunteers. Yeah. And I think that kind of just spread to include our athletes, right? So it yeah. started with friends, and that's kind of the whole motivator for us as we continue to grow. That's awesome. I mean, it, you know, to me, again, it's just such a building block. I mean, you just said, uh, Bobby, that you use the skills that you've developed in your everyday life now and, and after college. And that is so priceless. I mean, teaching those lessons, you know, not only to the athletes themselves, but then also the participants. I mean, I'm curious to know, do you feel that the social climate of like inclusion in, in sports and inclusion for special needs uh, in sports, is that, is that increasing, do you think, in the past few years? Is that something that you feel? I think unified is kind of a newer movement. Sure. Um, it really wasn't a thing eight to ten years ago, and I think people are beginning to realize that it's a really great way to be inclusive in a way that we're accepting everybody, and it's not you're not identified by anything. It's more just about playing on the field together. Sure. So I think that's people recognize that, and people when they see it and they come out to practice with us or see us at our tournaments, they see how how moving it can be and how motivating it is to everyone involved. Mm -hmm. So I think Special Olympics has started doing a lot of unified projects as well, and it's really you know, helping people on and off the field, I think, accept and, and be appreciative of people's differences. Well, and I'm curious, too, to both of you, did you guys notice uh, a change in the confidence, a change in the, the attitudes of, of the athletes? I mean, does it really help them self-confidence-wise? Do you notice off the field that there is a real difference? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think um, it's, it's amazing to see how you know, athletes and volunteers alike um, just kind of progress throughout everything. Um, I think a great example of this is Michael. Okay. So Michael on our team, um, he's like 10 or 11 years old, so it's, it was hard for him at first. You know, he's young, kind of coming into practices, getting familiar with everyone, and you could see at first he was a little bit unsure of himself, but it's amazing to see over time, you know, we really create this inclusive environment where, I don't know, we all respect each other, and we're all genuinely like being around each other, and, you know, we're all teaching each other these great lessons. And it's amazing to see Michael has really transformed, and he's, he's um, starting to develop into a you know, nice young man. Um, he's probably 13 now, and you could tell he's a lot more confident with himself. He's a lot more social with our volunteers. And it's just really cool to see. I think everyone that's a part of the organization has transformed in one way or the other. And I think that really stems from the inclusive environment that we create. And um, yeah, I'd say um, absolutely. And I think Special Olympics is an amazing organization, one that we definitely try to emulate. And I think they've really done a great job in, you know, raising awareness about, you know, disability issues. I mean, last summer, watching um, ESPN, I saw the Special Olympics World Games on ESPN, oh, wow. yeah. which yeah. is something really cool. I think they've done a terrific job of raising awareness, creating opportunities. Sure. And I think it's really cool that other smaller organizations have kind of been inspired by them and have continued the movement, right? Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, things like what we're doing, you know, Best Buddies. There's a lot of great organizations. And it's also really cool to see other universities throughout the United States are doing something similar to us. 
which makes it fun because, uh, like, little rivalries, right? Yeah. You know, all in good fun, but, you know, we play Michigan State in sports. They have a unified program as well. Okay. Notre Dame. So it's just really cool to see. Um, it's, I, I think it's, it's getting better for sure. There's, there's definitely more work to be done. Right. Right? We want, we want to be in a, um, a place where, you know, everybody's more inclusive. There's still a lot of work to be done, but I think Special Olympics and, you know, groups like ourselves are really trying to, you know, promote positivity. Sure. And um, inclusiveness, right? And just make, every, everyone deserves to have a friend, right? Yeah. yeah. Especially these kids. They're just, they're incredible individuals. They have so much to offer. And um, I just feel very blessed to, um, have, the to have had the opportunity to um, have worked with them. And it, it's amazing. Um, so I live in New Jersey now. And um, what really brings me back to Ann Arbor, and I, I really mean this, is, you know, my team. Mm. It's the, uh, the greatest team I've ever been a part of. I've been a part of many different teams. Mm -hmm. And it's just a team where I feel like there's so much learning that goes on, so much wow, positivity, yeah. so many great relationships. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I love Michigan football, but what really brings me back to this area is my team. Right. And more than anything else. Bob said this, but it's not just the athletes who have grown and developed. Like, we always have new freshmen that come on, and it's great to see how involved they get in the organization and how friendly everyone becomes. Like, mm. Everyone's uncomfortable on their first practice. I was uncomfortable on my first practice. And you grow. You grow comfortable with playing together, and it's less about being a volunteer or an athlete and more about being a teammate by the end of it. I think that's, that's shared by both sides, not mm. just our athletes. I mean, are, are there long, lifelong friendships that are developed as well? Uh, you know, in this organization, I mean, it, it sounds like it's one big family. And, you know, I think, you know, it's interesting because it just so happens that you were a student and you're a student at the University of Michigan and you did this in Ann Arbor and you started it in Ann Arbor. I mean, can you talk about the significance of Ann Arbor as a city and why you think it worked because of the place that Ann Arbor is? Sure, I can answer this one. I think um, it really stems um, the University of Michigan uh, being such a large university um, I just think there's, there's a lot of very, uh, you know, talented people, a lot of people that are passionate, and they're just genuinely good people. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we've really been able to tap into the great student population and um, also just a great area with um, a lot of um, individuals with disabilities, very inspiring. And I, I don't know, I think, um, I think um, everyone is really excited to work together, but I think it's really helped being at the University of Michigan, and a lot of people really do want to make a change in mm -hmm. the community. And I think that's really helped. And we also have a lot of um, you know, great families that have been absolutely phenomenal in helping me um, make this a reality. A lot of um, our athletes' parents have, have done so much for me sure. and have really helped me. I mean, it, it was tough at first, right? We only oh, had yeah. a few athletes. Um, we really struggled to kind of get the word out. But they really helped in um, you know, promoting the club, um, having other you know, some of their kids' friends um, take a chance on us. Mm -hmm. And um, there's been a lot of moving parts that have made this possible, and Ann Arbor is just a really special place with a lot of really great people. Yeah, I th so I joined in the second year of SYO. Okay. I'm a year younger than Bobby. Sure. And, um, like, when I came on, we had maybe 10 to 12 volunteers and about that many athletes. Wow. And so, I mean, it's grown by a lot by now. But um, yeah. the whole thing there was, you know, you tapped in. I met Bobby at Escapade, which is a freshmen coming together and meet groups. Okay. And, but the, the real thing that really helped us grow, I think, was our parents. Okay. So they were really, they, they're aware that we're students and they're, sure. we have a bunch going on and we, we've not really run that many things before. Mm -hmm. And they've been supportive of that and I think that's what makes SYO special. It's not just an adult professional soccer coach right. or, yeah, like we're peers. And I think parents recognize that and enjoy that and it's a great opportunity for everybody to be a peer, if, you know? So I think that's kind of like the motivator for... Yeah. And one us. more thing I wanted to add. I sure, think sure. this show itself, I think, really embodies Ann Arbor. And Ann Arbor is a place where they're really trying to drive change, positive change. And I appreciate very much that you have us on this show, Zach. Oh, no and problem. Just, just ha having the opportunity to, to be on something like this and really raise awareness and, you know, talk about what we're doing. I think that's really cool, and that's something that Ann Arbor is, I think, really special about, or very special about Ann Arbor. We have the opportunity to promote what we're doing, and so many people have supported what we're doing, and it's been really cool to be a part of it. And I really appreciate um, being on the show and everything. So oh, thank you. Well, no problem. And I mean, you know, thank you for everything that you guys have done. Uh, you know, it's just what you guys have been able to do uh, and balance academics as well as everything that you're doing uh, is incredible as well. So uh, believe me, the pleasure is all ours, and of course, the city of Ann Arbor thanks you as well. 
But I'm curious, uh, you know, you talked earlier in a response about the ages of the participants. You said one of them was 11 or 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So what is the age range of participants? Sure, so we have our youngest athlete is around six. Um, Pete is our captain, he's around 37. So we have a huge age range. Um, I'd say most of our athletes are probably middle school to high school age. That was kind of how we started and it's continued that way. And I think it, the lack of age range I think kind of shows how inclusive we are, right? I mean, we just want to make a difference. We want to build all sorts of relationships with anybody that wants to be a part of it, right? And um, in terms of your, your last question about the relationships, I mean, these are lifelong relationships, right? Um, and it's really cool. Um, you know, the af my athletes, uh, they'll call me on the phone. We'll talk once a week, which is really cool. Peter, Peter, who's the captain of our team, it's really cool. Um, <laughs> you know, I called him yesterday, told him I was coming back. So yeah. it, it's definitely really cool. We, we genuinely like each other. Sure. Uh, these are just great relationships that will last a very long time. And I'm really excited to especially see our younger athletes as they get older, right? Mm. And I know that they're going to do great things. And it's just really cool to see everybody grow up and, um, you know, get older, continue to develop into really, you know, special people. And um, yeah, it's very cool. It's great. I mean, both of you, if you can, I mean, touch on, and Davis, you probably would, would know this response a little bit more, but talk about the goals that you have set uh, for the future in this coming year. I mean, how do you think the organization can grow, and, and what are you working towards? Sure. So Bob formed this group, and when he was graduating last year, it was kind of a big concern for us, because he's always been the, the guy who puts everything together. Sure. So this last year and going into this fall, we're trying to make sure we have the architecture set up to be sustainable, so that... When I graduate next year, we have this awesome e-board, most of whom are sophomores. And they're young, young volunteers who stepped on in nine months and now running, running teams. But um, so big part of sustainability and then also growing up our other sports. So soccer has you know, about half our athletes on that team. And basketball is a close second. And we're trying to grow flag football in particular. That's awesome. And then we're also trying to become more involved with each other off the field. So we always have played and used athletics as our way of connecting with our athletes. Mm -hmm. but the, the whole goal is to be friends, right? And, sure. you know, of course you have an IM league you play with your friends, but you also hang out off the field. Right. So we're trying to do more events. Um, there's a, a wheelchair basketball game that we're looking to go to together in about a month. All right. And then we also were setting up, thinking about setting up a volunteering experience so that we could all be volunteers together um, in the winter. So we're trying to do more things off the field as well this year. That's awesome. So it's, it's sort of blending athletics and social activity at the same time. Yep. Th that's great. And then, of course, I mean, the great thing about this, too, is that, you know, no one has to, you know, pay a fee to join or pay a fee to participate. All they have to do is, you know, reach out to you, and, and they're able to participate. And exactly. That's great. Now, is it only, I mean, can, can you know, women participate as well, or is it just for? Yep. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, we, yeah, we have no restrictions on age, gender, anything like that. If you want to come play, then we'll have you. Yep. Okay. Yep. No, great. And, I mean, talk about, too, I mean, I'm really interested for both of you. Talk about the motivation. I mean, you're in the middle of classes. You're in the middle of exams. You're going through, you know, one of the hardest, rigorous schedules that you can as students, and yet you still find the time and the motivation uh, to keep this organization going. So can you talk about what motivates you guys, you know, getting up every day, getting up in the morning, staying on task, knowing that, hey, this is really something that I'm not going to burn out on. I really <laughs> care about it. Sure. Um, so I think for me, we had a freshman meeting yesterday where we had about 20 new freshmen who were looking to get involved. And that's always a concern because a lot of people, of course, there's, they're coming onto campus freshman year. There's so much to do. Why SYO? And like, why, why is it important to stay with it? Sure. And I think it's really hard to, to say why, but when you go to your first practice and by the end of it, I think everybody recognizes it's so rewarding. You can step away from, you can put down your books, you can get off of your exams, um, and it's a really good way that you feel awesome when you're done. It's a ton of fun. Sure. And everybody is so happy to be there. Like, yeah. everyone is smiling. It's really rewarding as a, 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 you know, to run it and have this great group of people around you. Um, so I think for me, it, it's, it's never really even crossed my mind to, to not do it. I just can't imagine what my Michigan experience would have been without it. So <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, for me, it's uh, you know, the people I've met and the relationships that I've been able to develop you know, with the volunteers and the athletes. That drives me more than anything. Um, the lessons that I've been taught, um, I don't know, I just feel genuinely happy and I feel like I understand how to live life a lot more. You know, um, I've really learned how to like persevere, um, work hard and I don't know, I watch, I watch our athletes persevere every single day and overcome, you know, everything and, and get better. 
And to me, um, it just motivates me to get better every day. Mm. And um, more than anything else, it's, it's kind of funny. I say this all the time. You know, University of Michigan is a great um, academic institution. Sure. But all of my, like, real learning, I think, happened outside of the classroom working with our athletes. And, you know, I learned a lot at the University of Michigan, but I learned even more just um, interacting with the great people that I had the opportunity to interact with. Sure. And um, that drove me more than anything else. And it's going to continue to drive me in the future to continue to stay involved and um, make a difference and develop these relationships and keep them going. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. And what, what I find so interesting, too, is that, you know, you guys are continuing to, you know, promote the movement. And, you know, I think that's wonderful. I mean, are, I feel like it's great because you're really able to act as, the organization acts as an icebreaker for a lot of students, right, that are coming in that are new, that, that want to be involved with the university in some way, but just aren't sure. And so, again, I think it's wonderful that you're there. I mean, what do you have to say to, to students that are watching right now to the show? And, you know, why get involved? Sure. Um, so I think when I first came to campus and I first had my, so I, I, I'll tell my story. Bobby sure. got his and it's uh, <laughs> not mine. Um, so I was a soccer player and that was like my thing. Um, and I had an injury and I couldn't play. I wanted to play in college and I couldn't. So when I was coming to campus, I saw a soccer ball on the stand and I was like, I'll do that sport. Mm -hmm. And then I, sh I talked to Bobby and I, was, I found out that it wasn't just about playing soccer, it was about volunteering and that, that was my introduction to SYO. So when I showed up to the first practice, I was uncomfortable. I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know how to act. Um, but you learn a lot about the issues that people struggle with. And mm -hmm. you, you realize how human everybody is. And I think it's just one of the most rewarding things you can do. And it's also fun. So that helps as well. But um, you know, as a student, you're going to be, you, know, you have all these stressful things. And it's important to put that in place. If you take a step back and see, see what your life is. And, and you're, I mean, it, we're all here at University of Michigan. It's a blessing in, in itself. So yep. it's humbling, and it's also just so much fun. So I think that, that was it for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I totally agree, kind of based on what I said, um, my last uh, thought. You know, you're going to meet fantastic people, people that genuinely like doing what we're doing. Yeah. You're going to build really strong relationships. And you know, I think the most important thing is you're, you're going to learn a lot you know, working with all the people involved. You're going to learn um, just a ton, things that you can't really learn in the classroom, things that you can only learn being challenged and kind of observing others around you and just the really cool things that they're able to do. And it's, it's really inspirational. I, I recommend um, you know, students try it out at least. And um, I think you'll really learn a lot about, about life in general. And um, you'll build really strong relationships. And yeah, I recommend it. And it's really cool to see um, University of Michigan students. I mean. We had our festival, or we had something last week where mm -hmm. we were recruiting incoming freshmen, and there's a ton of interest. Yeah. So it's really cool to see the University of Michigan students really getting involved with this, and some really just genuinely good people that really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think there's a ton to learn, and um, I feel very good going forward with Davis um, at the forefront of everything. Um, I think they're going to do a lot of very cool things, and mm -hmm. yeah, I recommend that students become part of it. And cool. I, I really think one yeah. of the special things about SYO in general is that you know, when people don't know about it, um, there's, I mean, there's so many different opportunities. But sure. what we've experienced, or at least personally, is whenever people find out about SYO, everybody thinks it's awesome. Cool. Like, it's, it's one of those things where everyone can really get behind once they start learning about what we do and the outcome that we have. So I think it's, it's something that a lot of people, there's so much support from our athletes, our parents, our volunteers, other organizations at other schools. Right. Um, it's really growing, and it's, it's a movement people are getting behind. So it's super exciting to be involved. That's great. I mean, yeah. people are getting behind it. This is a, a great thing. So yeah, I mean, why not get involved? You know, it's like, it's like trying a new and weird food for the first time, right? Yeah. You're like, I don't know about this. This looks weird. Let me try it. And then they try it, and it's their favorite food. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Just got to give it a try. Yeah. That, that's yeah. right. Just got to, uh, well, well, I mean, what, what does trying hurt, right? What is yeah. it? Yeah. But no, I mean, it's great. And then I'm curious to know, to Bobby, too, because he graduated, right? Mm -hmm. So. What are the plans for you then, now that you've left Michigan, and now that you know, SYO is here at the University of Michigan? Are you going to you know, be visiting and coming back periodically, like checking in? Or what's the plan for you then? Yeah, I mean, what really drives me to come back to Ann Arbor is, is my team, right? And um, you know, I already have a couple vacations planned. You know, taking off work, it's all right, they won't notice. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm coming back in a few weeks, and you know, I plan on I mean, Davis is running the show. He's, he's phenomenal. I mean, mm -hmm. we have some great people that are really passionate about what they're doing. 
So really, um, I guess kind of get to enjoy it, come back, um, you know, keep, keep in touch with everyone, come back to events. And you know, being at home, I've been working for three months now. I'm back in New Jersey, my hometown. And I feel like something's really missing. And I think what's missing is my team. So um, you know, going forward, um, I think I'm, I'm going to try to maybe start something in Marstown, New Jersey. You know, um, sure. Maybe get, maybe get local colleges connected and start something that we've done, something similar to what we've done yeah. here in Michigan. And I, I, it's just something that I need in my life. It's something that it grounds me, it, it teaches me, it makes me better. And uh, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to coming back to Ann Arbor and you know, potentially starting something in New Jersey just to continue That's awesome. um, contributing and meeting great people and learning. And you know, I'm really looking forward to it um, a lot. Well, and I'm sure that it'll do very, very well. Thank you. And uh, you know, I think that the, uh, you know, New Jersey will be better for it. Okay. Uh, I mean, but it's so amazing. I mean, you guys are so accomplished. And I mean, this is what you guys find as a great activity, an activity that takes you away from the grind of everyday life. But I am curious, you know, as students at the University of Michigan, you know, you've got to be football fans, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Both, yeah. Right? Yep. So, so, okay, so I, I've got to ask you, I mean, what's your thoughts on this year? Do you think Michigan will go all the way? <laughs> you know, um, I'm very confident with the team. Uh, you know, Jim Harbaugh is a fantastic coach. I think the players really connect well with him. He's had success everywhere he's been. I think they have a very, very good chance. Um, you know, definitely a couple tough road games against Michigan State and Ohio State. You know, those teams are always pretty tough to beat. Michigan State, I think we'll take care of business without a problem. Um, going to the horseshoe, I think it's, 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 a, it's a coin flip, you know. I think two very good teams, very well coached. Uh, you know, if things go right, I really think it's a winnable game, and it's nice to have that feeling going into Ohio State, you know, feeling confident, knowing that we could beat them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the all-time serious score, Michigan has more wins than Ohio State. Yep. So I think that Michigan football is back on the map. People understand that, and I don't think a national championship is out of the picture. I think it's, it's, very, it's very possible. A lot of you got, you got to win the games, right? you got to win the games, but um, I feel as confident um, as I ever have. Um, unfortunately, as a student here, um, I started in 2012 and I just graduated last May. Um, I didn't get to see um, any you know, championship teams or anything, but um, it's, ni it's been nice to see Harbaugh come in and really progress and improve the team. Um, yeah, I love Michigan football. I could talk about it all the time, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you can't tell, but yeah. yeah. Go you're, Blue. Yeah. You're a fan. Go Blue. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Michigan-Michigan State game. Okay. Um, but even more so, on the day before, SYO's flag football team is scrimmaging MSU's program. There we go. That's so the that, game to be That at. is the big the game, game of the year. That's right. Yep. So uh, hopefully we can get two wins in a span of two days. Yeah. There we Feeling go. Feeling pretty good about our flag football team. We're looking pretty good. There we Great go. Time. Wonderful. Well, gen gentlemen, thank you so much again. And thank folks, I want to thank you so much for watching Ann Arbor Inclusive and hope that you enjoyed the program. And please... Be sure to tune into Ann Arbor Inclusive next month. Stay awesome, Ann Arbor.